What's up, girl? Oh, doing good, doing good. It's nice and sunny today, so always good when the sun shines. It's been so beautiful here for a long time. I'm just waiting for the hurricanes to come or whatever. But oh, really? hi, Eric. I love you. How are you doing? He said, "Hey, Mama Sita, I love you too." Oh, I'm good. I'm doing good. I'm spending a lot of time with you guys, so um, I'm happy I get to spend the time. Good. Awesome. How's the family? Doing good so far. <laughs> so far, knock on wood, wait for the other shoe to drop. That's what I live my life as a parent doing. Waiting for the it's, other. Oh, everything's going great now. Boom. Something happens. So anyway. Say, Mama, it's always going to be like that. It's always I know. Gonna be up, up and down. That's just part of life. That's, That's how true. we grow. That's how That's we learn. True. And I know it's not always fun and easy but you know you're never alone you know that and of course. Uh, you know I'm keeping an eye on everybody so we're I know. gonna be getting we're going into the right direction so it's gonna awesome. get better awesome well listen hey uh, I would like to interview Edgar Casey I didn't really know much about him I still don't but so many people want me to interview him or want yeah, us to interview him me, so I, I have never heard of him I know Nostradamus I heard that name mm -hmm. I've of Edgar Casey, so this well, is going to be interesting. <laughs> he was like some. I think he would fall asleep on a book and know all the information in it or something. I'm not sure. Well, you know, we can ask. We can ask uh, him <laughs> when he. What What are you famous for? <laughs> Sorry, guys. I just did not have time to research, and I prefer not to research. You know, so I don't ask. You know, um, pointed questions. He's here. He's definitely here. Um, his energy feels very kind of goofy. <laughs> really? He, yeah. So I expect he's a serious man, but he feels very um, lovable and huggable and um, kind of goofy. So his energy is, um, <laughs> Eric's like, that's because he's standing next to me. <laughs> I was going to say, you guys are, are just two peas in a pod then. You're just like Eric. Hello, Mr. Edgar. Mr. Edgar Casey, he's saying hello. <laughs> can, can I call you Edgar, or would you like me to call you Mr. Casey, or maybe it's Doctor Casey? Oh, okay. Whatever feels more comfortable for you. It's well, call, call me Elisa, and I'll call you Edgar. Uh, I want to start out by asking, what are you famous for? Edumacatus. Well, he says, you know, I'm famous for um, giving readings. I'm, um, I was a medium who recorded everything. Um, and I think that because all this work was saved and because everybody can read it and has access to it, um, I guess I was the first well-recorded medium. Oh, okay. <laughs> in modern age. Um, he says, you know, it's not something that I imagined I would, would have been doing. I actually um, stayed away with from a long time. Um, it made me feel uncomfortable, uh, although I knew that um, for me it was very normal because I've always had it since I was a little boy. Um, but I know what people thought of it, and I know the criticism it would have received. And so I really wanted to stay away from that. And I didn't like to be judged. I didn't like people to look at me as weird or um, different. So in a way, I, yeah, I kind of avoided it for a long time. <laughs> well, what made you decide to come out in the open with it? Um, he's making me feel like... Um, he's going like this and he's very visual he's saying he's making me feel like there was something wrong with his voice um or he lost his voice or his vocals were damaged or something like that he's just going like this okay. um probably keeping everything inside that communication messed up your throat chakra and you had to just Go ahead and release it by doing what you were meant to do. Is that it? 
he's saying yes um the loss of voice was uh the universe um trying to open my eyes and and making it clear that you know my voice needed to be heard that there was um messages and um information that needed to be shared um and he's he's talking about going to it's like they tried going to the doctor and they tried all this medicine but nothing was working um and he's making me feel like he went to a hypnotist or somebody that uh, does holistic healing okay it, it, more like a hypnotist um and it's like um in his hypnosis he he helped him temporarily he says and so he had to go back every now and then because it would uh, his voice would fade away again and then at one point the hypnotist had the idea to ask me in my hypnosis what was the problem oh um and so apparently the information came out really fast and really clear and so um eventually i healed my own voice with mm. the information that i had received and that kind of it made a little click in my head like well if i can do this for me maybe i can help other people who can't be healed by doctors or where the medicine isn't working and so that's kind of how everything um you know the door opened a little bit okay. that's where things started uh, but still, you know, I was very um, shy in a way and I was, uh, you know, only taking certain people and, you know, eventually it started growing and growing more and I got more and more comfortable with doing it. Um, Were you more a psychic or a medium or both? Well, I had communications with my deceased loved ones um, ever since I was little. So, um, but what I did was I found a way to go into a meditative state. Mm -hmm. um, and in that meditative state, I, the information that would come through was a combination of me, uh, my own consciousness combined with a higher consciousness that was uh, sending through information. So, um, in a way, I was trans-channeling, uh, mostly, is what I was doing to... Um, the recordings that we did were always trans-channeling. I would lay down and I would go into my meditative state and basically somebody came in and we joined spaces. Mm -hmm. It was not like I left. Um, I didn't always have a recollection of what I was saying. Um, about 90% I did not. So when I woke up, I was like, okay, did I do something? <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. Oh, my uh, gosh. Well, uh, did you tap into the Akashic Records? Was that part of it? Um, he says, yes. The information came from a collective. Um, and, you know, we call it the records because as a human, we... You know, we want to see it visually. It's like, oh, there's a whole these books with everybody. I know, I know. Right? But it's really just a collective of consciousness where oh. every detail of everybody's life, of everything ever been, um, is just stored. So if you would look at it from our perspective now in this timeline, you know, you have the Internet. And the internet has all this information and it's circulating all over the world in every single frequency. Um, you know, the, the arch, arch, archives that we have um, in the other dimensions is, you know, I mean, it doesn't even reach the potential of, of it's like, you know, a million times bigger. It's infinite, <laughs> you know? probably. It's it, he says because you know it, it just keeps changing and it keeps changing and things keep being added to it because um, you know the future never stops the future is always in development so is the past and so is the present you know because time doesn't exist mm -hmm. so um, a lot of people have questions he says about uh, some of the predictions that I did um, that they didn't come true at the time that I said they were. And that is because things are constantly changing, moving, developing, growing. And that's something that in that moment, you know, in that timeline, 
it should have happened. But because we are constantly changing things with our consciousness. Yeah, this those- free will. Yeah, what, how do you, how do you uh, factor in free will into your predictions? Well, you can't. That's the whole issue. The only, thing, the only thing that mediums can do, and that's why a lot of mediums stay away from future predictions for people because it can shift at any time. Um, it, <coughs> he says, you know, every time one person makes a different choice, the whole universe can change. The whole yeah. outcome can change. Wow. And people forget that. People forget how powerful their mind is. People on Earth um, now in this time frame really don't understand how important they really are. They just feel disconnected from everything. They feel like, well, I'm just another number in a whole bunch. Um, but separation but is an illusion, you know? Think about the butterfly effect. Or it's exactly. like a ripple at a pond and it spreads out to the entire ocean. That's what you're yep. talking about. Well, how, who wrote everything down for you while you were in this trans uh, channeling state? Well, my wife started doing it. And then later on, we had a fantastic woman who uh, joined our team and then she did it. Okay. What do your parents think about this or your siblings, your close friends? Well, my parents at first, they thought I was different and I was a little outside of the box. Um, and, you know, for a long time, I was looking to have kind of a normal life. So I was going into um, professions, he says, that were normal. Um, and so, you know, my parents supported me in that. And, my father later on when i really wanted to um start a more spiritual journey and i really wanted to um create a hospital and i wanted to create a center of where you know um people could be healed with um you know with uh, holistic um medicine um he really supported me in that and i was kind of surprised by it yeah uh, but my father had a different view of it. Mm. I saw it as a mission, as a um, a message from God that I needed to do this. I was very religious, um, and you know, for me, this was my way of um, serving God. My father tried to see the dollar signs in it, um, so we did have a different perspective. But I always stayed true to myself, um, and you know, I. Half of the time I wouldn't charge um, or, you know, sometimes people would just give it as a gift, you know, and a lot of times I would return it if it was too much. I did keep some because I needed to keep my family going, sure. I needed to, you know, put okay. food on the table, but um, my father saw the profit in it. I did yeah. not. It okay. was really from the heart. Exactly. Um so you were religious. Well, how did that jive with, you know, the Bible saying that, you know, the tongue of flames, you know, it's the mediums or like the work of the devil and all that? Well, he says, as I from very little, I was already talking to angels and, and, and spirit guides and I was mm. talking to my grandfather. You know, for me, that was a normal thing. I... I also saw, you know, uh, people's auras. I could see people's energy. So I, from birth, I had a completely different view on things. But what I found so fascinating about the Bible is I could see behind the stories. I could see further than what was written. Um, and for some reason, a lot of the things in the Bible um, spoke to me because if you look closely, it's all about love. It's about healing. You know, it's mm. it, it's there's so many messages in there, but you need to see it from a different perspective. You can't just read it word for word and take it literally. Um, and that really, you know, I read that book over and over and over. Um, you know, I would read it the whole thing once a year at least, and I would read it over and over and over. Wow. Until Really, it was almost like I could see in the book um, and I could see events happening in my head um, that were related to the stories. Uh, you know, a lot of the stories are altered, but I could see behind the story. Wow. Um, 
think, you know, I did understand that there was something greater out there. And whether we called it God or we called it something else, it was there. Uh, and for me, that was God. Um, so you, so, so, so I and, and, when I read about Jesus and his work, how he was healing people and how he, you know, could uh, manifest things, you know, that really intrigued me. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, with the information that I was receiving from my spiritual guys that I was just communicating with them, um, it just made sense. You know, there were so many things that made sense. And the Bible in that time was the only thing that was spiritual. You know, there were no books about spiritualism and there no. were not a lot of things about being, you know, trans channeling. And, oh, and, yeah. and if you look at it, you know, for me, that was the Bible was the only thing that was that was allowed, that was accepted to be read. Right. And, you know, and that was still in a way for me, very spiritual. Right. So um, that's how I saw it. That's how I saw the Bible. And it was very, very important in my life. So your your Protestant your very strong Protestant background didn't really conflict with your work. No, it did not. It did not. All right. Did your religious beliefs change after you uh, transitioned? No, it didn't because I really all the information that had come through that was recorded really explained how the universe works, how. Um, how everything was stored, how the energy was moving around us, how, you know, God is this great source that keeps everything going. Um, there was so much information that would come out of me that I then later had to read because half of the time I woke up and I had no idea yeah, what came sure. out. Um, you know, there was so much information and in detail that, you know, I had a really good idea of how, it would work and where I was going after this. So there was no fear. There was no um, misconception, really. So it was just, you know, I was just going home. I just went home. That's all tell, I did. tell me about your, that experience when you transitioned. What was the insight you had? What was the experience like? Well, the way I saw it, I was greeted by Jesus. Oh, wow. <laughs> Special VIP. There's a little, uh, the little red velvet rope, you know, and Edgar, come on in. You get to see Jesus. You know, what I saw was, um, and uh, what I saw was pretty similar to what I saw during my transitions to during my meditations. Oh. I saw a really bright light. That's how all my meditations started. Mm. He's showing me this light that just kind of grows and it gets bigger. So it starts small and it just gets bigger. It's almost like star that just starts shining brighter and brighter and that's how um he went into his transition because he says you know it was i was used to seeing that so there was no worry or anything like that you know and there was uh jesus he was smiling at me and waving and um he's talking about how his son was there as well um oh so, yeah um, yeah i see that that uh, yeah that you lost your son when he was a baby uh, these yeah, are questions some of these questions are from, from a blog member Kristen. Yeah, his mom was there, and, and you know, he's, um, he's saying family members were there to greet me, and um, it was just like having a warm welcome home. It was just, you know, it felt so peaceful, and it felt so, so right. um, and light, he says, <laughs> yeah. very light. You immediately feel like this burden completely falling off you. Although I had such a great understanding, there was still, you know, you still have the human aspect. You still have the 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 burdens of yourself that you carry with, with you sure. because, you know, I could be very strong-minded. I could be very stubborn at times um, to, you know, even <laughs> my wife would, it would drive her crazy sometimes because, um, you know, uh, financially we were not doing well but you know, I refused. I refused to ask money for what I was doing, um, and I only wanted what was what we needed in order to survive. Right. Um, you know. So you still have the human aspect, and when you pass, when you really go home, it's like that is all lifted in oh, one yeah. second, it disappears, and you feel so light and so loved and. Um, yeah, it was a great, great feeling, and I was glad to see that my wife <laughs> decided to come home with me um, a few months later. So we didn't oh. have to wait 
for one another. Oh, that's so awesome. <laughs> now, what did your baby die from? Uh, this blog member says, uh, you know, was it from SIDS now or was it from some other illness? Uh, what we call SIDS now, you know, sudden infant death syndrome. Um, he's saying that Milton died of a heart disease. Oh, okay. Something wrong with the heart. Um, he's saying in those days we couldn't uh, detect that. Um, and he's saying, you know, it was just part of Milton's journey, but it was also part of our journey because we were dealing with um, deceased loved ones and we were dealing with um, illnesses and deaths. But in a way, losing a son is so much different than losing your grandfather. Because, you know, I Tell did have yeah. a traumatic experience with my grandfather. Mm. I think I was about four, he says, mm. um, where he saw his grandfather drown and he couldn't oh. do it to save him. So he did have some experiences that were very traumatic, mm. but he says nothing was as traumatic as losing a son. Tell me about um, it. I know. I, I, to help him. I had helped so many other people. And when I was asking for their assistance to help him, um, what we tried didn't work. And for us, that was a blow to the head. That was really, um, energetically not good for us we really went down for a while yeah. and it made my wife sick it made her you know her immune system dropped because she was so sad yeah. because she was you know she she couldn't um, accept that we I was saving all these other people and I couldn't save her son so that was really um, a time and a lesson of acceptance mm. that some things are just meant to be. We're not meant to save everyone. Um, some some of them really just chose this short time on earth, and we need to respect that. And, and that was a hard lesson for us. But was she upset with you? She she was disappointed. She, um, he's saying she was a woman who didn't really get angry. But she would get quiet. Mm. She would pull back. Oh, the silent her. treatment. Uh-oh, that's always yeah. bad. And she would really grieve in her own way. And, her, and you know, everything just kind of went inside when it came to her. So um, I don't think she blamed me 100%. I think it was more, um, she was more angry at God that okay. we got, this, that I got this gift. And then I couldn't even use it to save our son. So, um, you know, it did lead to her being ill. Um, Apparently you, they say that you had a stroke and passed a few months after Milton. Is that true? Was it a stroke? Or was it something else? He's saying who? <laughs> huh? He's saying what? Who? No, did you have a stroke? How did you die? Um, he died, he says, because, well, I didn't, he's saying I died years after that. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, we had another son after Milton. Okay, so, okay. Yeah, he died, he died, um, because he says we had three children, and our, it was Milton was the middle one who died. So. Okay. Um, but no, he says, I died later on, on, on a later age. <laughs> He's saying, okay, so my biggest problem was I couldn't say no to people. When mm. people asked for help, I couldn't say no. And so that would really exhaust me, not only physically, yeah. but also mentally and energetically. Mm. So in a way, as I was helping these people, I was not taking care of myself. I was not getting regenerated. I was really draining myself. Oh, yeah. So, you know, in a way I, I really died of exhaustion. Um, I died of, you know, my body and my mind were completely drained and um, that had an effect on, um, on my physical health. Um, sure. And so that's really the cause of it. That's really, um, okay. he's saying, and that's the thing. He's saying, you know, I had this life as Edgar, 
It was really a life of service. It was really a life of love for others, sharing compassion and love and healing. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, you know, being in service of others. Um, but what, I, you know, the one thing I regret is that I didn't take enough care of me. Yeah. And that I didn't, um, I understand now that the money question, um, you know, I needed to take better care of my family and I needed to take better care of me. That way I would have been able to help a lot more people um, than I did. But, you know, the outcome, the early death was, was really an outcome of my choices, of my free will. Um, so it wasn't meant to happen then, but it was just an outcome. It was just um, my free will he, who led to, you know, um, the demise of my body. In my so, mind, so you but, think you should have accepted more money? I should have accepted more in order to um, take better care of the family, in yeah. order to provide them with a little bit more than what they had. But also I needed to take more time to recuperate. I needed to take more time off. And that is something that, you know, I didn't do very often. Did she ever become a licensed physician? I mean, doctor? That's one of her questions here. No, I did not. Okay. Now, uh, here's another question of hers. You predicted that Russia would become a beacon of hope for the world. Do you still believe that? Doesn't look like it's going that way now. Can you say that again? Because I didn't really... Sure. You predicted that Russia would become a beacon of hope for the world. Do you still believe this? He's saying Russia's really taken a turn in a different direction. So uh, free that will. one's free. free will, yeah. yeah. Free will, free will, and the lust for power. He mm. says, as long as the lust for for power prevails, you know, um, the world's always going to be in a negative state. Oh yeah. Uh, once we, you know, we understand that the power of love is the way to go, that's when we're going to receive our healing. Yeah, I hope that comes soon. Now, a lot of people think that you are reincarn you are incarnated on this earth now. Some say you're David Wilcox, others say you're Anthony Williams. What is it, if any? He's saying neither. <laughs> wow, are you incarnated on this earth at all? He's saying I am, um, but I am in Egypt. Oh, really? I'm, uh, it's kind of like a guru. Really? What's your, you, yeah. do you, uh, what's your first name, last name, any, anything? He says his name is Mohammed. Oh, okay. Wow. Well said. Kind of a cool Egyptian out, uh, um, accent there. So why is David Wilcox and Anthony Williams uh, claiming to be you? Um, just for more publicity. Okay. Do they really believe that though? Or is it just a scam? Do they really truly believe they are the incarnation of you? No, they don't. Ugh. It's a scam. Yeah, that's awful. All right, well, I'm going to ask my usual uh, spiritual kind of questions. Your spiritual mission, Edgar, what was it? Well, it was really to, um, <clears throat> open up the doors to a spiritual perspective, to a more spiritual awareness. So it was all about um, showing people that there's more to just this physical, mm -hmm. that there was a way of healing in a different way. Um, also to provide information and knowledge of uh, the universe around us. So it's more of a teaching, um, teaching and exploring the spiritual world and realm um, from a very down-to-earth country boy. Oh, really? You're a down-to-earth country boy, huh? Uh, <laughs> well, I was going to ask what you were here to learn. Huh? I loved oh. gardening. I loved uh, playing games. You know, people, um, my readings, you know, when I was going in transition, I became this other entity, but during the you know my regular lifetime, I was just a regular country boy who loved to be outdoors. Mm. I loved the ocean, um, and you know I loved fishing and playing with the kids and picking berries with the kids, and you know. Uh, How nice! Yeah, Aww. I would have liked to have been your friend. 
All right, I was going to ask you what you're here to learn and teach, so we know what you were here to teach. What were you here to learn? I think you've already probably said it, but just in case. Well, I was here to learn self-sacrifice, but also acceptance. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of uh, criticism on what I did. There were people who would... Um, They would like test me, uh, experiment, and oh. then they really try to, um, you know, make it their mission to prove that I was a nutcase. And um, so, yeah, it was really just about accepting myself, that accepting that this was what I was supposed to do and I needed to stop running from it. Um, and, and yeah, self sacrifice in a way. Self learning to self sacrifice? Um, yeah, it was a learning. He says, well, it really had to do with a life. Um, and this was a past life, he says. I was he's kind of showing me like Egyptian times, I think. Okay. Um, it kind of looks like he was this... Um, also very spiritual at that time, kind of like a priest, I think, or like a, like a spiritual leader. Okay. Um, and he says he did have a lot of powers. He did have the power to manifest things. Um, he did have a power of healing. Um, so he, he was very connected to source. Um, but he said, I... In that lifetime, I really misused my powers. Um, I started to use them for ego, for self-gain. I started to abuse people in order to get what I wanted to get. In what way? Uh, How? Well, give me an example. Well, he says there was a man who would come to me regularly um, in order to ask for advice. Um, and so what I would do is um, I would um, he said um, I would make deals with him to um, it's almost like um, how do you say that what's that word I'm trying to find the word for it. It's like, I don't know the word for it, but <laughs> he's just saying a word, but I don't really understand it. Um, I think what he's trying to say is he would like scam people. Okay. Uh, you know, he would work together with certain people in order to gain um, like uh, financial stability, which was in those days gold and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, even women, he would abuse and sexually uh, harass women. Edgar. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he's saying I was not so much of a nice man, um, but it was all about power because I, you know, great leaders of Egypt would listen to my advice. So if I wanted certain um, certain powers to become mine or if I really wanted to have control over certain areas, then I would use them, give them a specific advice in order for, you know, receiving that in order ah. for towards me so um, the advice that I was giving them wasn't always from the gods but it was more of okay well the gods are saying this but it was just to attract it more to me or to make it turn into my own benefit um, it was all you know I really liked the life of luxury I liked the life of you know uh, being able to do whatever I felt like doing having the power over people um, you know if I would say I didn't like a person or I wanted that person's wife I would tell one of the leaders well the God is saying that he needs to be oh. sacrificed that way I could gain his oh wife my God. Like, so I, it was a pretty yeah I really abused and used all my power you know, it, it didn't start out that way. It, what was your name? It kind of sounds like Ahumet, but I'm okay. not 100% sure. Okay. It sounds kind of funky. Ahumet. Um, okay, it's so like A-H-U-M-E-D, I think. Ahumet. Okay. 
Um, and, you know, he's just saying, I didn't start that way. I started with a very clear mission that, you know, uh, I was connected. And um, from a very young boy, they saw the connection. And so I was kind of prepped ah. and raised to be put in that position. Um, but then ego starts kicking in and you start to understand that these people are listening to you and they are hanging on your every word and you starting to think, hmm, how can I use that to make my life more comfortable? And so ego starts growing and kicking in. Um, and so I really went from a good hearted person to, to a pretty cruel person. Power can uh, corrupt. Power can corrupt. Mm. And so from that life, you know, I went in Edgar, I did, it's almost like, it's doing pen, you know, yeah, I went from complete okay it's for everything for another person and nothing for self gain um and so those lives are very closely connected uh in really experiencing the both sides and the extremes in both directions so but, um, but your self-sacrifice went too too much to the other way where you didn't take care of yourself or your family exactly so and that's the trick in life isn't it he says it's always about finding that balance you know it's about listening to your yourself and your heart and um you know in a way i knew that i needed to take better care of myself but the urge to help people was always stronger yeah so yeah do, i do needed you, to listen more to me yeah <laughs> do you feel like you accomplished everything you set out to accomplish with your spiritual mission and what you were here to learn and teach well, he says I did because, you know, I did have a premonition that so many years later, people would have still uh, been uh, practicing and, and teaching each other how to be a psychic and how to see the world and how to live a life of love and compassion. Um, and so to this day, they are still teaching that. Um, and so I'm very happy to see that um, we are doing better as a human race that we are going in the right direction, that the spiritual world um, is opening up to a lot of people. And, you know, there's just one thing I really want, I want people to understand, and that is that everybody is a psychic. Everybody. He says, you know, being a psychic, it starts with your intuition, and everybody has it. Everybody, yeah, sure. Everybody. It's just about learning to listen to it. Instead of, learning says, to, instead of listening to your thoughts only. Yeah, listen to your heart. You know, that's your psychic ability right there. So he says, you know, the second thing is dreams. I always uh, he said that dreams, um, and I still, you know, it, it, this is the case. You know, dreams are just an expression of what is there to come or what you need to work on. Right, because okay? I recently had a, a dream that I was unloading my dishwasher. I have very <laughs> profound dreams with big meanings. <laughs> But okay. That means you have to look. You look. You have to look further than that. He says you really have to look at what it could mean. Of course. He says what you need to do. Unloading the dishwasher means that you are still holding on to certain ah. things that you can't release. Okay. You need to look at the symbolism behind it because what we will do. Let's just say you dream about. Um, there's a leak in your house. Mm -hmm. Okay, your house could be a symbol of your body, that there's something in your body that's not doing well, or there's something, um, you know, that needs attention. It's leaking. Do I need diapers soon? Is that what's in my future? No. <laughs> He's saying you have to really, you know, when it comes to dreams, you really have to look behind it. And then, yeah. you know, everybody dreams, even people who say they don't dream. I can guarantee oh, you, yeah. you're you are dreaming and it's just about keeping a little notebook right next to you because the moment you move you will forget what's know, going on i know and then write it all down and look behind what it could mean because it's just an expression of the direction they want you to go into or uh, things that might be coming for your future and it might not be you know it's not like oh look this is a picture of what's going to happen it's really mingled with our own fears and and thoughts and so it kind of comes out sometimes ridiculous these dreams can be really ridiculous um, but he says, you know, if it's any consolation, what I can give you is if you're having nightmares, 
if you're really um, having a lot of fears, fearful dreams, that means that you're not going in the right direction. Ah. Okay, it means that you're off track. That you're uh, there's something that you are doing, or you are going in a direction that is not uh, beneficial for where you're supposed to be going or for your growth. Mm -hmm. So if that is something that you're struggling with, you really need to reevaluate yourself and your life and say, hey, am I really going in the direction I want to go? Um, or are there things that I think we need to change? And you'll notice that if you are on the right track, your dreams will get softer and, 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 and more normal and you won't okay. have fearful dreams. So that's, that's interesting. Thing. So, and again, those dreams make you a psychic. They make you an intuitive. Um, you know, there's so many people who, um, who've had an experience, and it might just be once or twice, but we've all had that experience where either, you know, best friends or partner all of a sudden say the same thing. Yeah. You know, or, um, oh, yeah. Something, and the other one starts. Yeah. Or, uh, one, one person's thinking of a question and the other person answers and then he says, well, you didn't ask me that question. How did you just answer? Things like that happen all the time, yeah. you know, you know, and that's telepathy. Yeah. We are constantly doing that and we don't even know it. So, you know, look closely at every detail that happens into your life and you will find the proof that we are all sidekicks. And all we need to do if we really want to, you know, uh, make that a part of our life, a part of our uh, existence, is to pay attention to it. Okay. And the more you open it and the more you practice it, the more you'll see that, you know, it gets clearer and clearer every day. Because we are all the same, we're all connected, and we all have the same psychic abilities. It's just about how you perceive it, you know. That's right. Don't try to be Edgar Casey. Don't try and be Jamie Butler. Be you. you. Everybody has a unique frequency in this universe. Mm. That uniqueness that will also create a unique way of connecting. So never try to be somebody else, yeah. but find your own way. It will always look different. There is not one medium or one psychic out there who is identical. Okay. And he's saying, you know, also give him some slack. You know, I was criticized because a lot of things weren't correct, but that is because we are still human. And yeah. sometimes the information that comes in, you know, it can be affected sometimes with a certain state of mind, or sure. maybe we were feeling good that day. Yeah. Uh, maybe, you know, we were having a bad day, something happened. So, you know, when it comes to criticizing psychics, you know, the information that comes out, will always be there to help you, to support you, to bring knowledge and understanding of what is going on. But if you really want to um, get every single detail of, of certain things, then you're not really looking for truth and you're not really looking for, uh, for growth, mm. but you're looking to um, criticize. To validation, you want confirmation. Do you have any other messages for us? I mean, that's a big one. <laughs> And saying, well, know that you're never alone. It's part of this huge. Um, he's saying God is all over. Let me say it that way. He says I compare God to electricity. Hmm. It's everywhere. It's everybody's connected with it in some way, but we can't see it. Okay. That is what God is. It connects everybody and everything on a very um, electric kind of way. He says he's very cool. sparkly too. <laughs> Oh, we're sparkly. Um, can you share something about you that nobody knows about? Who's going, ooh, that's always a hard one. I mean, maybe your wife, your family, et cetera, knows about it, but the general public doesn't know. We well, saying, I, uh, you know, and, and people might, some people might know this, but he's saying I did have. He's talking about how he loved photography. Oh, okay. He says when I looked at pictures, it was in my mind. I I felt like I was capturing a soul in a moment. Um, it was it was not just the pictures for me. That was a spiritual experience. Mm. 
I was um, freezing a moment in time that would last forever and ever. Uh, it was almost like having, um, being a witness of people's lives. It was being a witness of this beautiful um, spiritual connection that we have. And so, um, yeah, I really enjoyed doing that because, you know, if you look at photographers nowadays, you know, some of those, you can look at a picture and you can feel connected with the person that is on there. Mm. Now, that means that at the moment you are connected because you are mentally thinking of that person and you might not even know this person, but you are connecting on a very high energetic frequency mm. with this person and so this person in the picture will hear you will feel you he wow. won't know it is and sometimes when people are deceased you know they immediately go hey they're looking at me hello oh, well, uh, about that even if they're still alive that person will get that energy jolt from you and feel mm. that connection and they might not be able to explain it and they might not be able to understand why all of a sudden they get a picture of a man they've never seen before but that is because you are connected with that energy that's so cool. picture people are not just pictures they are a caption of, uh, of of energy and so those pictures will carry that energy forever you know um and and so that's why a lot of mediums they ask for pictures yeah of the big ones do. yeah what all we need to do is we need to put our hands on there and we feel that connection yeah he said we need to understand that everything has an energy field. Mm. And so when we take a picture of a person, the energy of that person is captured in a moment. In no, Bella. Okay. Hang on. And, and you know, that's, that's why, you know, let's just say you have a wedding ring of somebody. Yeah. Right. Th that has energy there. When we put it on that energy of the ring connects with the energy of the person. And in that moment, they become one energy. You okay. become united with that ring. And so when that ring t is taken off, the energetic frequency of that person is still attached to that ring. Yeah, that makes sense. And that's okay. how, you know, and, and that's just, that just, I think, I always thought that was incredible. That is amazing. All these energies really become one. So if you just think how, if we just talk to one another, I'm talking to you now, he says, through Emmanuel, I'm talking to you. And we are becoming one. Our energies right now are one. Mm. Uh, and if you look at life in that way, then uh, you will see every relationship and every connection, you know, with, doesn't matter what it is, um, when our energies connect, we are one. Yeah, and that's interesting. Well, I like that. I think everybody should do that. We'd be a closer society. So what do you think about uh, channeling Eric? And what do you think about Eric himself? Be he, said, well, he had a different approach to me, but, you know, these are different times. So, <laughs> But, yeah, I love Eric because he is so straightforward. You know, he's just down to earth. Look, this is what the problem is, and this is what you need to do. Um, but he says it in such a loving way to people that, you know, whether or not he is straightforward, people accept it because he, they can feel the love with, you know, with the messages, you know, that he's sending out and, you know, in every reading that he does, and he has so many mediums that he's working with right now. Um, every message always gets straight accepted into the heart because he is um, truly a, you know, a spirit, an entity who he does it with so much love and so he much does. respect yeah. for everybody. And he did already when he was alive. He had so much respect for people and for he living did. creatures. Yeah. Um, you know, and he just moved that to the next level. You know, he just went from being completely in tune with the understanding that, hey, everybody's important and everybody deserves love. And now he's actually spreading that out over the world globally. Um, it's incredible. And he's saying, you know, there's so many more others out there who are doing that. But Eric has his very own unique way. Um, and I think it's his very down-to-earth, um, simple explanations 
you know, that anybody can relate to, whether you've ever heard of a past life or not, whether you've ever heard of, ooh, you know, a higher self or not, you immediately go, oh, I, I understand that. Yeah. Because there are so many other ones out there who are also very great and very good in teachings, but some of them you really already have to have that spiritual background in order to understand it. Eric connects to everybody of every spiritual background, and that is where his strength is. That's where his power is. And so I'm so glad that, you know, we are continuing this mission to become a more enlightened people. Um, yeah, Eric's not one of those. Eric's not one of those gurus that that goes, "Welcome, dear, my dear one." He's not one of those, <laughs> is he? Exactly, and those people are fine too. Yeah. But you know, you, there's always going to be people that you connect with, and people that you're like, "Oh, that guy's kind of boring." What he yeah. says is right, yeah. really kind of boring. Um, or this person doesn't really feel right to me, and that's mm -hmm. fine because we yeah. need to have different people, sure. and you know we are all different and so we need to have different entities with a different feel so we can relate to all these different characters and and and, and uh, spirits within um, we're all very unique and so you know just like in the spiritual world and just like in the human world we all connect to a certain frequency and you have you know groups that stick together because their energetic frequency is pretty similar and so yeah. people you know, goofy and just want to know it's straightforward. And, you know, they're going to relate to Eric and people who are more scientific. They might relate to people who are more uh, into, you know, yeah, talking sure. about seriously and this and that. Um, you know, everybody um, has a certain uh, frequency that we connect to. And so um, okay. he's saying, you know, I, I love Eric because he, even in the spiritual world, he's just like, hey, what's up? You want to hang out with us? We're going to do a brilliant interview. What do you think? Uh -huh. <laughs> So, he's so funny, like that. and we're like, "Ah, oh, yeah, sure, let's go." Oh, that's um, cool. He's well, not only loved on Earth; he's also very much loved um, in the spiritual world I'm because so he is giving so many spirits, um, you know, a chance to um, assist the development of the human mind awesome. uh, and growth. So, because that's what they all want to do; well, they all want to be part. Uh, hey, let's help the human yeah. race. Let's yeah. Continue. Hey, we and need grow. all the help we can get. Well, well, um, well Eric, that's why we're, we're all sticking together. Eric, do you, do you, or Emma, do you have a question for Mr. Casey? Well, I'm just wondering if Mr. Casey would be willing to kind of come by every now and then and help me with my development. Oh, that's a I'm great idea. I'm still in, you know, I'm still growing every day. And, and I don't think, you know, like a lot of them have said, I don't think the growth ever stops. And for me, you know, believe it or not, I haven't been doing this for that long. I've always had the feeling as a kid, but for a long time it was cut off because yeah. of personal issues and because of personal problems that I had. So I just restarted connecting to spirits about a year and a half ago. So for me, I could still use all the help because, you know, I know there's so many things out there that, you know, I have readings where people go, what about this and this? And I'm like, wow, I've never heard of that. And I, I learned from them. Yeah, and sure. So, so yeah. So, Edgar, can you help her? I was just hoping that maybe he'll come by every now and then and we can have like a teaching session or yeah, something. Yeah, see, I, I get Bruce Lee to help me with my kickboxing. Yeah, there you go. And so I asked Bruce a lot too if I really – um, you know, if I really uh, need help or assistance in a certain way, so you know, and he's saying he'd be he'd be honored to help me uh, with answers and things like that. So thank you very much. What about um, you? What about you, Eric? Do you have a question? He's saying, well, no, not really. You know, he's saying, I'm glad that he mentioned um, that you know we're all still human, and you know it's not always 100 percent. Of course not. You know, to the T, right? Yeah. And, you know, but I want people to understand that we would never allow the wrong messages to come out. Mm. Um, so we are, in a way, guiding all these mediums to give you the messages that you need to hear in order for you to go into a positive direction, into a more growth uh, uh, pattern. Um, so he says, you know... Um, if you're always seeking for perfection, 
you'll never be satisfied in life. So let go of that. He says, and just follow your heart. And when you to these mediums, you will feel in your heart. Yes, that's it. Or "Mm -mm, I don't know what that was about, but that didn't feel good. Yeah. Follow your heart. And that will tell you whether or not you are really communicating with us or not. That sounds good. Wise words, Eric. Yeah, he says. Thank you, Mr. Casey, so much. This has been delightful. You're quite a chatterbox. I like that. We got so much information from you. He is. He is. And he's kind of, I'm just, uh, he's just smiling. He has this big, big smile. Um, He kind of looks like my grandfather, which is kind of weird. He has this round face. He has, like, glasses, big smile, Um, very short hair. Um, He really (laughs) reminds me of my grandfather. That's cool. Um, He's saying thank you. Thank you, and I'd love to come again, he says. <laughs> All right. We'll get you on. So, uh, you guys, if you want to check out Emma, uh, I will put the – right up here, I will put her website. It's www.emmanuelmackintosh.com. And anything else you want to say about yourself and what you have to offer, Emma? Well, I just want to remind people that we're having a Channeling Eric Belgium event on yes. September 9th. So um, places are, you know, there's not that many tickets, so there's only a certain amount of people um, allowed in the room that we've hired. Um, So um, don't wait too long to order your tickets. There are still tickets available. Just go to the website, and um, you can find the tickets online. It's going to be a lot of fun. Carrie Mena from The Shiny Show is going to be coming as well, and she'll be talking about energetic healing. That's going to be fun. fun stuff like meditation and mindfulness exercises and e-boards and it's just going to be fun 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 and eric's very excited so to everybody who is close or in the neighborhood feel free to stop by order the tickets and we'll see you hopefully on september 9th sounds great bye emma love you eric love you emma love you eric (laughs) bye everybody bye